Good day. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. It is Thursday, May the 4th, and we've got CEO Greg Farron of Platinex joining us. Platinex acquires and advances precious and metal, battery metals projects uh, in Ontario. Greg's here to outline the story and discuss some of the coming catalysts for the company. But please remember, this is neither a recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Greg, thanks a lot for taking the time to join us today. And let's hear about Platinex. Okay. Hi, Martin. Thanks for having me. And uh, certainly a pleasure to be uh, discussing this with your, your audience. And uh, yeah, nice to be here today. And uh, as mentioned, I am the CEO of Platinex. And why don't I just start off by telling you a little bit about how I got involved with Platinex. Great. And then we'll get into the uh, the story. And as you said, you know, for yourself and others, please feel free to ask questions as we uh, move forward. I don't mind uh, being interrupted. So just in terms of background, uh, I started off in, in, in capital markets, and then I've been involved the last uh, at least 10 years in different juniors. And when I was the CEO of Treasury Metals, we sold some ground between the Aris's Juby deposit and Platinex's Shining Tree project in the, the Timmins, south part of Timmins. And that was, I guess, in the middle of 2020. And we became, Treasury became one of the largest equity holders. And as a result of that, I joined the board. And then Treasury went through a, a process of getting its mine permits completing a large acquisition, creating quite a large uh, development gold story in Ontario. Uh, so I moved on from that and the timing worked out quite well because I had been on the board for Platinex for about a year. So I, I got to know the people, kind of got to know what some of the issues were. And we decided to start adding some of these projects I had identified. Uh, the founder of the company, Jim Trussler, uh, resigned or, or, or retired actually. He was in his 80s and had a long uh, distinguished career at tech. In Falconbridge, so it was a great fit bringing in a capital markets person combined with his technical skills. Uh, he remains on the board today. And then we started adding um, some projects into the portfolio. And uh, so that, that's probably a good entry point. And if you want, I can just get continue into the uh, the PowerPoint. Perfect. Sure. Okay. So, so, so since then, I guess that was about, uh, say, 15 months ago. We've done a lot of work to uh, enhance the portfolio enhance the shareholder base, the board, the technical team. And, you know, our strategy is acquiring and developing projects in Ontario. We have three district scale projects. They're in both uh, the battery metals and uh, the precious metal sector. Uh, they're all large scale, uh, meaning, you know, big land packages. And all these projects have been previously worked on by major producers in Canada. So Inco, Falcon Bridge, for example. Um, and we acquire these projects. You know, the benefit of that is you're getting projects in good jurisdictions. You're getting a lot of historical work done on these projects. So we can really move them quickly uh, through exploration and development. And uh, with that, we've, uh, they're all located in, you know, good locations, prolific camps. And since a lot of these majors have owned them, like Inco, Falconbridge, a lot's happened in the regions. So, for example, new mines have come in, into production, as in the case of, uh, Cote Gold, uh, I am Gold's Cote Gold. So we have that, that ground there. And so th that's really the strategy. Uh, the one project we put in was a copper nickel platinum palladium project in the northern part of Ontario. You can see it right here in orange, I'm circling. Uh, we acquired that just prior to the BHP um, Wailu bidding war for a very similar looking project called Eagle's Nest owned by uh, Arant at the time. And we put in, I think it cost us about 200, 300,000 in shares and cash. And uh, there's been about 10 million spent on the project. And we've been able to put back the Lansdowne House was the former name of the project um, and into this new company. And the timing's great because you've had uh, you know, that, that bidding war take place. And then a lot of infrastructure plans to open up the North are, are underway. Uh, we also have a nice gold portfolio as well, located in the Southern part of, of Timmins. Of course, that's uh, much, much further south with lots of infrastructure, lots of operating mines. We recently did a joint venture transaction on that on those two projects. So I'll get into that more in more detail later. There's been a lot of work done on Shining Tree and he and Mallard. And the next two years, we've got about $3 million of capital we're going to put into drilling those projects. And that's going to be our, our primary focus this year. And next, uh, they're actually in the field this week. And uh, next next week, we'll begin announcing the work we're going to undertake on those two projects. 
And then finally, I won't get into too much detail today. We also picked up another uh, project called Muskrat Dam, which is another copper nickel project owned by Inco. And there we're focused on the uh, lithium potential. We've also got a royalty portfolio, again, all focused on Ontario projects, giving you uh, more exposure to Ontario and those different uh, projects. And the other final intro comment I'll make is Ontario, I think, is a great place uh, to work for mining. I spent most of my career either working in the capital markets here or in mining projects in the northern part of Ontario, in particular in northwestern Ontario. And you know, there's a real push in Ontario. We've got that big automa automobile manufacturing sector, as you're aware, in, in the southern part of Ontario. And then you've got obviously the U.S. automobile manufacturing sector as well. So there's a real push to develop the mines in the north to supply and develop uh, that sector. So there's been a lot of improvements in terms of permitting, uh, improvements to tax credits, uh, improvements for infrastructure coming in. And this is actually happening. You know, you're, you're seeing the governments investing in these projects, which is starting to encourage other types of uh, investment coming into the sector. And I think that'll continue over the next uh, decade. All right. So if you have any questions on that, or I, I can just continue, but just quickly, I won't spend too much time in this because that's going to be on the website, but here's the team. Um, it's a nice mix of uh, technical people. James has mentioned and Felix are both geologists, Sam, Christoph, and myself are all pack, uh, tech capital markets background. Graham is our CFO. He's also involved with uh, Goliath Gold, which has been one of the uh, success stories in, in Canada, in BC. And I believe they're out doing quite a large uh, financing at the moment. And, uh, and then Robbins helps us out on the, on the community. And in the intro, I mentioned we've been acquiring these projects. And one thing that's quite unique is a technical team has worked on these projects when they were previously owned by these operators like Welcome Bridge and Aranda. So they have that experience at the time, and but they also are now helping us move these projects the last couple of years. So Blaine, for example, has done a lot of work on the Juby deposit and in Shining Tree. Ike did all the drilling for Aurora Platinum and FNX uh, when they owned the Copper Nickel project. Fred Brakes is a, considered one of the top lithium experts in Canada, and he's done a lot of work in Ontario and uh, in particular Muskrat Dam. And uh, yeah, before I get into the projects, I think I've covered a lot of this. Just wanted to look at the chart and, you know, the stock does trade quite well. We trade about 100 million shares a year. Um, I'll get into some of the new shareholders we have, but it looks like it's an attractive entry point. We've been consolidating now for about 18 months. And now we're um, stocks up trading above its short term and long term average. And we're going to have a lot of news um, over the next uh, 18 months. And just wanted to highlight a lot of the things we've completed over the last year. Uh, we just closed a $2.7 million financing. We brought in a joint venture partner, some new assets. And now this next year is really going to be about exploration and then continuing on some uh, interesting strategic uh, transactions we've got in the pipeline. Um, just quickly on our capital structure. So we trade mainly on the CSC under the symbol PTX. We're just in the process of getting our uh, F11 filed or 211 filed in the US. So we're going to start having the volume there as well. So the market makers will start first and then we'll be trading on the QX shortly. Um, we've got about 20% ownership by three mining, uh, five mining companies, three public and two private. And uh, I think that gives a lot of uh, credibility and stability in the stock. Uh, myself and the founder have about 10%. Maybe it's 15% if you sort of include some of our you know, closer contacts. Uh, we've got um, a big European shareholder base, done a lot of work over the years with different mining companies in Europe. And we've got a, a good following with some family offices in Switzerland, in particular in France. Uh, we've got a good shareholder base in Quebec. We've actually got about 10% of our shares held in Alberta as well. So nice diversification. And now the focus with the expiration is going to be trying to look at adding some institutions to the shareholder base. And as mentioned, we just financed uh, raising about $3 million. And then we've also got that uh, joint venture partner. Greg, sorry, can you yeah. flip back one? On the sure. three mining companies, the Alamos, Treasury, and FanCamp, did they put in hard dollars or was it sort of uh, in exchange for properties and sort of uh, as a result of transactions, so to speak? Yeah, um, good question. Um, FanCamp put in the hard dollars in that recent placement. 
So that placement we did was done about um, a third. They put in about 1.2. A uh, group at a Canaccord did kind of the balance and then a little bit of Europe and Quebec. And then Alamos, we bought the former producing mine at the Shining Tree Project from them. I, I can show you that later. And then yeah. Treasury as well. Uh, I can just flip through it to it now. So this is the ground that Treasury sold to get their shares. And then the producing mine we bought from Alamos is called Rhonda. They operate the Young Davidson and they're quite keen on the whole district, I believe. So they like the idea of becoming an equity holder and having a, a bigger regional play on the Shining Tree Camp. Yeah. So that, that's how they got involved. And I know they're they're still a shareholder. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess my thought is, you know, in, in the market in general, um, obviously I know the juniors are are, are soft at the moment, um, uh, but I do think it's uh and it's been a long sort of grind the last 10 years sort of down, but you've seen the venture index bottom out last year. You're starting to see, uh, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, battery metals and how important mining and energy is. And I think you, you know, you're starting to see some of the big cap M and A's everyone's probably aware of example tech. Uh, there's a number of names in the lithium sector uh, number, you know, HUD Bay bought a copper producer. So, you know, you're starting to see M and A at the uh, Newmont and, and the Newcrest and we example. got two thousand dollar gold, so uh, that yeah. should be excellent. Yeah, exactly. And then the commodity prices are strong, and you know, and, and so I think we're just around the corner for starting to see you know major amount of uh, capital coming into into the commodity sector, and that and that's really our our strategy. We put these assets together, we put the people together, we got a good shareholder base, we got the company property financed, and now this year is going to be all about and next year about. Um, moving these projects forward with expiration. Um, so we're going to focus really on these the gold portfolio and, and Timmins. And I do expect that camp to be consolidated with a lithium project. You know, we're financed to sample the, the lithium this, this season. So that will happen in the summer. And then I do think there'd be opportunities down the road to spin that out or divest. And then our, our sort of flagship project we spent last year, you know, increasing the size of it, getting it permitted, and now it's going to be about you know drilling that in a couple phases uh, to expand on that historical resource. So now, if you want, I can just get into the projects, and I'll just do a couple slides on on each project, and just starting with our, our gold prod portfolio. So this is the uh, the Timmins camp is located a little bit further north. You've got these major structures that moves across uh, Timmins into the Abitibi uh, through Ontario and into Quebec, and we're on the ride out deformation zone. Uh, which is south of Timmins, and you've got some major deposits like Newmont's uh, Borden Mine is located just further west. And across, you come across, and you've got obviously the the Cote uh, project, which is going to be in production next year. And uh, I am Gold sort of turned that around, and looking like it's going to be quite a in, interesting uh, development for them next year. And then we have the the large Shining Tree; it's about 250 square kilometers. We put that together. Beside us is uh, Juby. Uh, deposit, which is owned by Aris Mining, and, and Alamos is located over uh, here further east with our young Davidson. So lots of infrastructure, lots of roads you can see. Um, we've got about 350 square kilometers between the two packages here. We just bought this project from Fan Camp. It's part of that joint venture where they're going to spend about $3 million in total to earn 50% uh, interest. And, and, and I do, the reason we did that, it will allow us to accelerate drilling this year. Because I do think this camp is going to get consolidated. I think IM Gold, when they're in production next year, is going to look for other opportunities in the camp, uh, you know, including the Shining Tree Camp and, and probably the Juby deposit. So both these projects have seen a fair bit of uh, exploration work. Um, so the guys are in the field right now. We'll start announcing the programs next week. Um, and there's going to be a combination of uh, you know two phase program uh, of drilling, and then we'll continue doing early stage exploration work. So. You know, we're looking through the data right now. We'll be in the field uh, getting the best targets ready. And realistically, they'll probably be a combination of drilling some of those best targets earlier in the program. And then we'll continue some of the early stage exploration work like soil sampling. So, for example, if you've got a really high golden till sample and an IP target, you know, it may make sense to do some geochem around that target first and then get that ready, um, depending on the results uh, later in the year. And um, 
So yeah, so we'll we'll get those press releases out, uh, one for Shining Tree and one for Heaton and Mallard as they get in the field and we begin the uh, the drilling and the early stage exploration. And just talking specifically about Shining Tree, uh, the Rhonda was the former producing mine we bought from Alamos. There's an historic resource in and around Herrick. So we'll do a bit of exploration, expanding that resource and seeing if we can expand that at depth. But the real potential is just on, on the greater area outside that central area where there's been, this project's been consolidated through a number of acquisitions. And the last couple of years since Treasury got involved, you know, we encouraged Jim to let's look at the greater property. So there's been 600 and gold till samples. There's been IP done across the project and trenching, sampling, mapping. Uh, last summer, we did 2000 uh, soil sample results, SGH uh, hydrocarbon. So we'll announce those results next week. And then we're just going to continue uh, that work as well in some of these newer areas. And that's how we're developing all these uh, new targets. And so at the end of the day, we'll be able to do a combination of drilling uh, the new targets, looking for a discovery, and then expanding on the central pass producing area. And you can see some of the results here, uh, 35 meters over a gram, right at surface, uh, Platinex drilled uh, four grams over five meters to give you an idea. And uh, so we'll, we'll follow up with some of those results. And that's the same thing with Heen and Mallard, the other project I showed you up by Cote. Greg, sorry, can we just uh, go back? I want to, before we get um, So there's an old exist, there's an old mine that's been closed down. Is there any opportunity to reopen that mine or is that sort of, that part has been sort of mined out and now your closeology, you, you had a great deposit and or there was a great deposit there and now looking for what's in the vicinity or is there uh, opportunity to open up that, uh, reopen the the old mine? Yeah, it, it's it's not something you'd want to reopen. It's one, um, it really needs to, to be drilled to sort of get an idea of the actual resources. It's gotcha. one of these historical mines where they never developed the resources okay. like, like you would today. You wouldn't. Yeah. It wasn't drilled off, say, to a million ounce deposit. It would, they would just mine, you know, along the veins, and we just consolidated that from Alamos. So I think they had the surface, and we had the down dip. So it's the first time it's sort of been under one roof, uh, the owner. Okay. And um, so it does make sense to, you know, to poke a few holes and uh, see what type of results were there. But but yeah, it's not. Uh, like a, a recent producing mine. There's How been about was tw it? 20 bulk samples done around the project that, you know, different, different operators. Yeah. At different time periods. So, but they were always looking for, you know, quick, quick production. So now it's something nowadays, you know, you need to find a commercial deposit that would, uh, you know, fit by at least a half a million ounce open pit or because you've got, you've got near, nearby operating mines. So it doesn't need to be, uh, a standalone type type project, you could in, in theory find a million ounces near the surface and have that uh, to be economic. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And how many drill holes have you punched into the 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 property? Yeah. So Platinex itself has done sixty two drill holes, mainly okay. in the central area, and they all had uh, gold and so, you know some decent results right at surface. Yeah. Um. So the question there is, do you have a commercial deposit or are you, you know, realistically better to look at some of these? Because, you know, the big deposits in the area are on the ride out deformation zone. So that's why we're looking up in, in this area in particular. And then down around the Aris deposit, we found some very interesting, uh, you know, uh, either high grade samples or uh, interesting results from uh, IP and the uh, uh, the soil sample we've been doing would we'll be showing, you know, high, very interesting anomalies that you'd want to drill. Yeah. The, I mean, it looks small, but that's 250 square kilometers. So that's okay. a, that's quite a large yeah. uh, land package. And then the and, same thing. With, and with those 62 holes you've punched in there, is there a resource estimate off of that? Or um, is it just uh, you're waiting to do more work to sort of piece yeah, the, it together? Yeah, there is a resource. I mean, it, it, it's small, somewhere around 200,000 ounces. Okay. So, so yeah, that, that's one of the things we're doing right now. While the guys are going to be in the field, you know, continuing to do target work, we'll we'll model that resource and confirm if it makes sense to expand it, step yeah. out and try to expand that. Or are we better just to be looking at some of these new targets? And that's that's why it'll be done in two phases. You know, we've got some real obvious places you want to drill immediately. Yeah. And then you need some other areas where you need more work. Um yeah. 
before you want to drill it. Sorry, and then to the uh, fan camp uh, joint venture you you've got there at seventy five yeah. twenty five. They're earning in to get fifty percent uh, ownership of it. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. Yeah, and what what are what are the what do they have to do to to get that fifty percent? And how is that JV kind of structured? Who's running it? Who makes the decisions in that? Yeah, yeah, good question. So they they sold us Heenan Mallard. This project right here, they had 100% interest. So now we own 75 of that. Okay. And they own 25. And the joint venture is called South Timmins. So they have 25% of both projects. Okay. In total, they're going to spend about 3 million in to get 50% over the next couple of years. And we're, we'll remain the operator um, up, up until that 50%. And then they'll be the operator after that. And it's 50 50. So then we'll both fund the work. I mean, we both have sort of a common interest. They don't want to develop a project like, say, a Barrick or I am Gold. You know, their interest is, uh, is uh, you know, getting these resources drilled off and, and looking hopefully to exit through some of these players in the camp. Like you've got an Eagle Eagle right here, um, um, Aris, Alamos, and uh, I am Gold. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we we were quite keen on the Heenan Mallard project, and they've got a portfolio in Quebec, so it wasn't something they were focused on. But this gives them something a bit more meaningful, having the you know the Shining Tree ground as well as Heenan, Heenan Mallard. Uh, they were quite intrigued with the the geology and the potential of this camp, so it was it was a good fit. Heenan Mallard, one of our uh, technical advisors, had previously worked on it, and he, he's quite keen to get out and, and drill this, uh, Blaine. And uh, one of the first things we would do would be follow up on some of the discoveries Naranda made. You can see some of the results, five grams over four meters, five grams over uh, 3.8 meters, right at surface. I think the deepest hole was about 30 meters. So, you know, a first phase program would be twinning, stepping out at these holes right at surface, seeing if you can start putting together a resource. And then we'll continue doing some of the geochem mapping, structural work outside that this current area here and then look to uh, in a second phase would be testing some of those targets gotcha and yeah. would some of that testing be done this season yeah oh yeah the, this season will be busy starting mid-may we'll be in the field all year and like i said it'll be a combination of uh you know in the case of uh shining tree we did the uh, three of the five areas 2000 soil sample results so there's another 1500 or so you're going to want to finish up on the, in the northern part of the property so that kind of stuff you you do at the same time you'd, you'd be drilling some of the areas that are ready and the same thing in he and mallard you know the same kind of work needs to be done drilling as well as uh, some of the early stage work so that, that'll be completed over the ne next two years Gotcha. And um, the question from the audience here on the Shining Tree, Heen and Mallard, how much has already been spent in Canadian dollars? All right. On well, those projects. I, I, won't, I won't sort of, I won't get into the historical spend uh, because it's, you know, it's, it's, I mean, with the Randa spending, they would have spent several million on that drill program before they, they dropped it in the 90s. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because now you've got a, near, a number of nearby mines. Um, but my, my get, and then same thing with us. So I won't talk about the past operators that owned and mined this project. But I believe um, Platinex itself would have put in about four or five million into Shining Tree. And most of the time I've been involved in that on the board, you know, through all this soil sampling, gold and till work, and some of that drilling we talked about, the 50, 62 holes. Yeah. And then, it, Probably uh, a similar amount, maybe slightly less, would have been spent on, on Heen and Mallard by the past owner, Van Camp. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, like I said, Naranda would have spent several million on that. Uh, Balkan Bridge owns some of the ground here. They would have spent money on that. Like, There's about 20 bulk samples done on Shining Tree. Okay. So not not, not counting that that capital. All right. And then the other thing we that was included in that uh, transaction where we bought um, Heen and Mallard was this uh, Dorothy claim package, which I just mentioned is interest here. It's the extension of this uh, thundercloud discovery in a company called Dynasty Gold that just uh, completed a $4 billion financing with Rob McEwen as the lead. And I know this area quite well because uh, Treasury's Goliath uh, Goldland was operating further up in the Northwest. So 
well, we picked up that interesting extension. So that uh, something, you know, we may do some work on it or we could look at, at monetizing that. And then I'll just quickly get into our two projects, our battery metals projects in the north here, um, just, and I'll focus on W2. Um, so now we're, you know, Thunder Bay is down here. Um, one of the challenges, of course, with the northern part of Ontario is it doesn't have the infrastructure you have in Sudbury and Timmins. But as I mentioned, there's a real push to develop somewhere like the Ring of Fire to be something, you know, equivalent to what Sudbury was uh, back, you know, several decades ago. There are obviously operating mines. For example, you've got uh, Equinox's Hard Rock here. Red Lake is over here. Newmont's a Muscle White. So there, there are mines nearby. It just doesn't have the, uh, a lot of them are fly in, fly out. So that's our uh, royalty. We have a Big Trout Lake. That is our uh, muskrat. And then we've got the W2 project. And um, so within the Oxford Stull Dome, you've got these number of large intrusions. We think we've got the most significant one. It's called the Lansdowne House. It was discovered by Inco in the 70s and 80s. And then more recently in 2000, uh, it was worked on by Aurora Platinum, which then got bought by f &X. And then, you know, when these big producers uh, are acquired, these projects are dropped. Eagle's Nest, which was uh, owned by Wailu and that bidding war for $600 million they spent on that project. That project is more advanced. The grades are higher, but very similar in terms of uh, geology, copper, nickel, platinum, palladium. Uh, ours is a VMS project. It's part of a major goal system that sort of moves through the Oxford Stull Dome. And we just had Barrick stake a, a large chunk of ground right here on the west side. You've also got chromite. And then the original uh, platinum palladium project that uh, our founder was involved with was called Big Trout Lake. It's located up here in the northwest. So we own a royalty on that. So in, in total, uh, as mentioned, there's been about $10 million spent on, on the project. Um, it's at a historical resource stage. So, so there's sort of th three things you're going to want to do with the project. Within this area here, there's a, an historical resource. You're going to want to go twin and, and drill some of those holes. You know, the big potential is drilling in between these holes. So, so for example, hole six and hole 20, they both drilled about uh, 200 meters, a 0.65% uh, copper nickel equivalent. But within that, you get, you know, higher grade, 30, 40 meters of one, 2% copper nickel. And then below that, you get into another horizon of low grade copper nickel, platinum palladium. And um, they're all, you know, they're all, the continuity is quite similar. You hit the copper nickel at the same widths and similar grade. And then you get into the platinum palladium at a similar depth um, below that. And so the job will be to get out and drill between um, infill step out in between these these holes that's about four to five kilometers so that's something you do in the first phase and then you'd end up with a 43101 compliant resource and i think it would underpin uh the stock um and obviously with a project being this remote very low grade you're going to want to have a big ton uh, type project and that's why the infrastructure coming in place is uh is so important and you can see some of the numbers here, for example, 81 meters at 1.34 grams platinum palladium equivalent, 70 meters at over two grams platinum palladium. Um, and, and it is quite an interesting project. We're going to continue focusing on that central area. Um, but over here in the east, there's some very similar looking targets um, that you find at, at Eagle's Nest, for example. That's the uh, project further to the east. Um, very similar IP looking targets out here to the east. So in, in sort of a second phase program, you'd look at drilling that area. And then there's this major gold system, as you can see this sheer hosted gold system that runs through about 30 kilometers of our project and continues into um, the Ring of Fire. It starts over here, uh, comes through Northern Superior's land in, in green. And this is, we were quite surprised to sort of see Barrick stake this ground a few weeks ago. So we're not sure what their planned are. I mean, I, we know their ground is not, you know, uh, mineralized or the geology isn't anything significant. You know, the real potential is through here. So we're expecting at some point they're going to want to consolidate that, that entire camp. And you can see there has been some high grade gold showings as well uh, on our project. And then you've also got titanium, vanadium uh, drill holes from, from past work. 
and then some chromite potential as well. So that's kind of a unique part of the ring of fire. You've got a lot of this uh, different mineralized potential, but we're going to focus on the copper, uh, nickel, platinum, palladium in the central area. And that's kind of a kind of a wrap there. So just to recap, right. you know, the, the money we have now, the 2.8 million and the joint venture funds are all going to go for the most part into our gold projects. So we'll, you know, we'll begin drilling that. Uh, we'll begin the field work next week and we'll announce those programs. Um, and then we've also, we're funded to do that lithium sampling work, which I didn't really get into. Um, but that, that's a good first step is to confirm some of the historical work um, it was, they were focused on nickel and copper, uh, INCO, uh, but there was uh, lithium identified and it's right at surface, um, you know, white pegmatites and outcrops at surface. So you want to go in and do sort of a low cost sampling program. And then we would look at what we do with that project next. And then as mentioned, you know, the, the first phase for the copper nickel project would be drilling around the historical uh, resource area or the historical drilling and look to start putting together a resource on that as well. And we were uh, successful in getting that permitting. So that was a, a, a key thing we worked on uh, all of last year was getting uh, the support from the government and, and the communities up there for, uh, for drilling this project. So I can take some questions now if you'd like. All right. Um, will the government be giving out grants for exploration in the Ring of Fire? Grants. Yeah, well, yeah, I I know Ontario's had one fund of five million dollars that was completed, and we did receive a um, hundred thousand or so for the Shining Tree project. And we've actually applied to have a new fund. I think that's about seven million again that they just launched, and they're now making decisions on who's getting that funding. So we applied for the Muskrat Dam uh, because uh, how the grants work is if they Brand, you say 200,000, you have to match it to 400,000. So it was a kind of a perfect size program. And then you get refunded that 200,000. So it, it's quite a good system for the government because there's, there's, you know, all that money is going to be put into the economy in terms of hiring geologists and sampling and, uh, you know, field work. So it just goes back into the economy. So yeah, we have applied for a grant for the Muskrat Dam. We didn't apply for W2 just because that needs, uh, a two hundred thousand dollar type program wouldn't be uh, sufficient, obviously, to fund to drill it, because all the work's been done on that on that project. All you need to do is a uh, additional metallurgy, and then uh, then expand on that historical drilling. So, so yeah. is, so is, is that government question, funding essentially for kind of? It, it sounds like it's kind of structured so it makes sense for earlier stage exploration and and sampling programs and that sort of a thing. Oh yeah, that, that that's the work that they want going to. Yeah, is yeah. sampling, early stage work in Ontario, all 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 commodities is my understanding. So yeah. the Ring of Fire would definitely qualify for that um, as well. All right, all right, that's a good plan. Um, what is the most? <clears throat> what is the most advanced royal royalty PTX own? Um, well. Yeah, I would say, I would say probably the Big Trout Lake one up here. Yeah. Yeah. That was like a resource staged um, platinum palladium discovery. Uh, I'm not sure who owns that now, but that, that would be the most advanced, I would say, of the portfolio. So if we ever did look at monetizing our, our, our portfolio, we probably would include a royalty on, on our existing projects. Yeah. And then we've also got a royalty in, in Chile and uh, a number of other ones in Ontario, mainly Shining Tree and then up in uh, the Ring of Fire. So we may look to add royalties and then uh, spin it out eventually because we're not going to get any, any real value for it. Um, okay. or, or we may look at doing something right now that we're, I can't say too much about, but we are working on on a, on a transaction to divest and then get uh, you know additional funding for our, our, our exploration. So on the shining tree, you both own what right now, what 75%, you're going to presumably be worked down to 50%, but then you also have an NSR on top of that as well? No, not, not, not on, our, on our project. We have an NSR on, on projects in the area. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. I'm saying if we ever did divest our por portfolio, we could include uh, a royalty on our muskrat dam, for example, 
on our, we could put an additional royalty on our projects, right? Before we, we sell that portfolio, we could put a royalty on our uh, W2 project as well. Yeah. 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 Kind of dynasty thing, which would give us about, you know, 10, 10 royalties in total. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you can uh, monetize that. You're probably yeah not going to get a whole lot of value in the market for it, but it could do some nice funding of uh, exploration development sure. uh, yeah. work for you. And um, what you've got several properties as they presumably develop and 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 they 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 grow and and get better. Is the plan for you? Are are you flexible in your planning, or is or do you want to be a developer of these projects, or maybe as they evolve, you maybe spin off a couple of them and then folk put your attention on sort of the your 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 premier uh project in there what's the general philosophy behind working gr growing up these uh projects yeah yeah well i mean you know we don't have plans to to look at developing at this point but the next couple of years is going to be about you know the expiration drilling is really going to make make a, a you know significant difference so for our gold portfolio you know i could see us um making another acquisition for example to, to grow that that portfolio and then eventually spin out the, the subsidiary to a separate company. Yeah. Or if, if we're successful enough and just developing the resources, I do think that this camp will get consolidated. I don't know who, maybe Barrick will buy every, you know, all the entire area or I am gold will look to consolidate Shining Tree or Alamos. So that that would be the ideal plan. And then I think with the, the copper nickel project, um that could be a separate standalone vehicle. I mean, that once you've got that resource done, those first phase, at least that first phase of drilling done, it could be something that could be spun out. So you'd have a, a gold and then as well as a, a copper nickel separate spin out. Or, you know, within that camp, if we're able to develop um, the resources this year, you know, you've got Barrick in there now, you've got a number of... Uh, Ring of Fire Metals, Juno in that area, Northern Superior. My guess is there'll be others getting involved in the camp. So, you know, there could be more consolidation. So we, we could just develop the resource and, and, and look to exit through a sale to someone larger in the camp. That's, you know, next year. All right. And can you go back to that timeline slide? You, you've gotten, a, uh, you, you've mentioned the work on the different projects here, but maybe if we can have just a few minutes to summarize what catalysts and news events uh, investors should be looking out for uh, over, I guess, the coming quarters over the, the summer months where you're going to be pretty darn busy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the gold will, will there'll be most of the news flow will be in terms of, you know, drilling heat and mallard. And drilling shining tree and that's going to get done in, in in a couple phases you know the obvious areas right now we will drill in the first phase and then in, in september we would continue once some of the early stage work is done in the other areas and then do a second phase um so we'll do some in the summer as well as uh, in the fall the good thing is with that area you can obviously drill really year round you, you can't do basic sort of prospecting, obviously, in the winter. And then Muskrat will be there in the summer doing the sampling work. That's not not a huge program, but and it's quite low cost. So we'll we'll do uh, that work in the summer and get those results out in in the fall. And then you can really decide what, what what you can do there. There's a number of other lithium companies. Well, there's quite a few, as you know, in Ontario. There must be five or six sort of well-funded lithium groups now uh, in Ontario a number of Australians, and then there's a bunch of other juniors as well. So it's quite amazing to see the number of uh, well-funded groups uh, with lithium projects. I think a lot of them are going to disappoint. Um, you know, we're we're quite optimistic with, with the projects we, we've put together. And then, um, and then the other one would be, of course, you know, the big development would be uh, putting the resource out on W2. Um, because that would, you know, kind of surprise the market if you came out with whatever a 10, 20 million ton, you know, initial resource that would really underpin the stock. So last year we put the whole thing together. We did five or six acquisitions, got the permitting, and now you know where the program's fully designed, and then we'll be getting up there and drilling that uh in the fall or winter. 
All right. Okay, I, I think we've kind of covered the, the main things here. Is there anything you want to highlight before we uh, wrap things up? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think you know, I mean, with, with the shareholder base um, and the asset base, with our market cap somewhere between, you know, 10 to 15 million, and we're reasonably well-funded, we've got a joint venture partner, which will, will, will kick in additional funding uh, next year as well. Um, I think it's quite an attractive, you know, entry point. Uh, the stock looks good. Um, it's very liquid. So, you know, you, you can't argue that the stock doesn't have a, you know, <laughs> yep. reliable pricing over the last year. And I think as we get into a stronger junior market, you know, these stocks are, are going to do very well. Yep. Um, you know, and, and I'm also sort of committing to one sort of strategic transaction that will sort of enhance the market, you know, that you know, it could be a, you know, a combination of bringing in closing on as like a strategic partner for that, that copper project, uh, you know, sale of our royalties, you know, a number of other things uh, that, that we're working on uh, as well as expiration. So I think, you know, you, you'll get a, this year you'll, you'll have, you know, a lot, a lot happening in terms of both expiration and, and strategically. Yeah. No, the, the, your projects seem to have, and, and your assets with the royalties and so forth, you've got a lot of optionality where if whatever this happens, that happens, you can do other things. So uh, a lot of flexibility uh, in, in your, your pool of assets. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right, Greg. Okay. Well, with that, uh, I thank you. Thanks for uh, giving us the time to walk through the, the story. It, it's, a, it's a good one in a good location and looks like you got a good team and you got some cash to, to execute here. So um, thank you very much. Appreciate the, the time. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, Martin. Cheers. Take care. Ciao. Bye-bye.